Okay, what you're essentially doing, these are Hillman rollers. Underneath it, this is a 9,000 pound piece of machinery. And they've got these that you can turn the Hillman rollers with. You can turn this in circles if you need to. But because we're in tight quarters, moving it in, just a floor jack, floor tire, you got a 4x4 four four piece of metal, gave a little WD-40, and then move where I want. See how it's moving? Not fast, but moving. You see I put the fork in the jack so the pressure wouldn't slide throughout. Move the jack in a little tighter. Repeat the process. It's slow, but it works. And when you get to the point where it's too much, it'll just slide the jack. Okay, we're going to jack up one side so we can turn the Hillman rollers real easy. You can do it manually, but a uh, bit of a workout. You, these are rented ones and they don't spin so easy like they used to. Because <laughs> this piece here is supposed to, you can see it swivel, but uh, where's you out? Well, when they're worn out, they also don't turn very nice. What's the reason for the wood? Because the concrete was flexing due to the weight. And we kept on coming on level. So we had to keep on shimming these to adjust for height. Because what? there's so much weight there. And if you got any unevenness in your floor, it's going to show up. But why would? Why wouldn't you use like pieces of metal or something? You could, if you wanted. Is there an advantage though to wood? It tends to embed better and hold better and doesn't slide. Steel on steel will slide. Okay. And that's why we can see the 4 by 4 was sliding. So if I put steel under these and I get bound up, I could dump the press. 9,000 pounds moving around, uncontrolled is bad business. Definitely go into pinch zone on this one. Pop your fingers like June bugs. Now we rotated everything 90 degrees so we can slide tighter to the wall. <laughs> well, even when you set it down that slow, you can feel the ground shake. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> wow. This much weight, bad things can happen in a hurry. Oh yeah. I'm just glad the shop floor is holding up. I kept thinking we were going to have a crack here and there as we're moving it. You can muscle this with 4x4s, but uh, you're asking to get uh, worn out pretty fast. <laughs> and breaking your back lifting something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's not, uh, just depends on your intelligence level, I guess. <laughs> you got brains and you got uh, <laughs> muscles and brains, it's not a good thing. I well, like the old saying, if you're stupid, you gotta be tough. Or at least it better be. <laughs> now we originally moved it all the way in here pushing on the Hillmans with a skid loader, but it was so tight here we couldn't make the skid loader work anymore, so. And 
periodically check your rollers, make certain they're not twisting. And you want a clean floor, nothing to hang them up. I think that might be good. Take a look, see if you're happy. Huh? I don't know, I guess that's enough room to work around it, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, you've got plenty of room to walk here. Yeah, so I know you need access to the, your filters there too. I can move, that's not a big deal, but this corner here is going to get it more. What do you think? More? I think we can go by another foot. Okay, let's do it. It's going pretty quick. I mean, you've moved it already. A foot down there. Yeah, it's you can short see the scrape marks to steal how much you move it and how quick. <laughs> so it actually goes fairly quick. Oh, yeah, here's the pivot. Any idea how heavy that is? That's where that crack is. And a little piece got. So much focus there, it started breaking down. I should also give you an idea how heavy this machine how heavy this machine is. The guy had transport and he usually transports tobacco uh, with his truck. And he said this thing pulled harder than his backhoe does on the trailer. So I tend to believe the 9,000 pound claims they're saying because that machine probably weighs near there too, the back of So here's what these Hillman rollers look like. We took them out. Machine's all put in its place for now. I'm going to block it up and increase its height a little bit to use it. But these are what these Hillman rollers look like that we moved. See how that moves? Wow. And here's the top. Yeah, see, some of those are so worn out, the top didn't spin on them anymore. Rent them. They weren't expensive at all to rent, but gosh dang, if you go to buy these, they're $1,500 for a set like this. Then you got that lever right back there, green handle. Wow. This particular one, when we ran it, it came with two. Sometimes, if you get a group of guys, see, you go on there, and that's how you rotate everything. On lighter stuff, you can use these two handles to pull, but we couldn't manhandle that thing. It was too heavy. We tried. We had three people on it, one Brian with a board. <laughs> Didn't move, but it gives you an idea how these work. Let me give you an idea how heavy that thing was. It just pushed all these metal pieces, uh, wood pieces into that oblivion. Just sitting there. Look at that. You see where the mill sat along here? Concave that <laughs> scrap. <laughs> now, those are some of the shims when we hit cracks and everything to go up and down. Just crush the wood right in, but allowed us to get it over these cracks. And it didn't take much. That mill was so solid that any crack you had would cause one of these skates to not touch the ground. So, for the machine not to touch it. But yeah, they're indispensable for getting machines like this into spaces you probably can't get larger equipment into.